Welcome, everyone. Um, I'm so excited to get started. So we are going to go right into it um, and really start uh, with prayer and reverence um, as we as we focus on transforming the culture for God's glory. And this is a shift in each of the seven mountains of influence. And so we are going to discuss that today. Um, but first, I want to welcome uh, my first guest. Wonderful, Hello. amazing, powerful, <laughs> incredible Apostle Andrea Ward. Hello, welcome to the Shift Summit. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the invitation. Blessings, everyone who's joining and watching. Yes, amen. Um, I just want to first uh, tell you all about Andrea. Andrea has been uh, the most influential person in my life this year. Um, mm. God, God um, brought me into prayer uh, for the Shift Summit for this model last year. Um, and it culminated in what I call a divine download in January of this year when the Holy Spirit was just flooding my mind with direction, ideas, um, revelation. I mean, it, it, it was, it was so, it was so much y'all. I had to grab a notebook. This is in the middle of the night, like 1 AM, 2 AM in the morning. I had to grab a notebook and, and just start writing. And it was just, it was just so powerful. Um, and one of the things God told me was to call Andrea. <laughs> and so I did, and here we are. Um, Andrea is uh, my spiritual advisor. And I believe that every person needs a spiritual mentor. But when you are called to your assignment and your purpose, you need a spiritual advisor who can walk with you um, as you birth it, because you will encounter a lot of different things. And so Andrea uh, will be launching Empire One soon. You guys are going to hear all about that. Um, but today I brought her here for really a special occasion to help us all, you know, with the mourning of the loss, losses that we have all experienced uh, during the pandemic. Um, and whether it was related to COVID or not, you know, being in a state of isolation is has been very challenging for a lot of us um, because we haven't been able to grieve properly. And so when you can't grieve properly, you know, it stagnates something in your spirit that must be released, that must be released. And so just to share with you all, I've lost um, uh, really five people who are close to me. And so for those of you all who are here, um, I want you to uh, type the names of the people that have transitioned in your, in your life. Let's call out their names. Let's state their names. Please put them in the chat right now. We are going to honor all of them this morning um, because guess what? Everyone has a purpose and destiny over their life. Every person, every person. And so we are going to honor them today. So please put them in the chat. Um, over the past year and a half, I lost my grandmother, my oldest aunt, another aunt, my grandfather, um, and a very close family friend. And it was, um, it has been very hard for me to process that. And so um, in one of the areas that I um, really uh, sought out spiritual counsel uh, was around how to honor their legacies, how to honor um, their purpose, their destiny, um, and that's what we're going to discuss uh, th this morning and this afternoon. Um, but first and foremost, Andrea, I would just love for you to lead us in prayer and then into uh, today's discussion. Amen. All right. It is an honor to do that. Father, we just thank you. Holy, 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 holy. Father, we come with humble hearts and we thank you this morning just for loving us so. We come in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this shift summit today. We welcome you into this prayer. Lead and direct us. 
Father, we just want to just lift you up now. We just thank you for being faithful. We thank you for being Alpha and Omega. We thank you for being the beginning and the end. We thank you, Lord, for being the God that loves us in such a great compassionate way. Thank you for always being with us. Thank you for never leaving or forsaking us. And Father, as we lift up those that have lost loved ones during this season, Father, that has experienced loss, we want to magnify you and we want every heart to hear that you are there. Father, we summon the hearts of those that are listening. We command those even that are listening by way of replay, that they will hear this prayer and that the receptors in their heart will receive the prayer. Father, we just thank you right now just for your governance now, even through the shift, through this summit, Father, to even honor those that have lost loved ones. Father, we just thank you for just the the vessel of the shift, the vessel of your daughter, Candace, and the purity of her heart. Father, we just thank you right now. And we come in the name of Jesus. Father, for those that are transitioned during the pandemic, um, those that have suffered greatly, we pray, Father God, that your light will penetrate every dark place. We pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that those that have lost their proper position will be repositioned in you, Father. We thank you, Lord. You are um, watching over those that you love, and we pray now for those who have lost spouses and that have become widows or widowers, Father. We pray now for children who have lost their parents and have become orphans, Father. Father, we pray, Lord, for people who have lost their homes, who have lost employment, who have lost finances, dreams, and hopes. We pray, Lord, for those who have lost um, in areas of mental stability and physical stability, emotional struggles, Father. We pray, Lord, for those who have experienced loss and have um, suffered from addiction and that the struggles have brought pressure and caused them to relapse. Father, we lift them up to you. Yes, Father, Lord. we lift up everyone who has suffered. You alone hear the cries of your people. You, do, you alone know when, they're, when they cry out, Father. So, Father, we pray now for their well-being, and we pray for their mental and physical and emotional needs that they will be met. Father, we pray for housing and finances and transportation for those in need. Father, we pray for their hearts. We pray that their hearts will be strengthened. I pray that they will call upon you now in the name of Jesus. And now I speak to every heart and I call upon everything that is suppressed in your heart, that it may come up and surface, that it will no longer be dislodged for your healing to come. I pray, Lord, for repentance, that they will cry out to you. I pray, Lord, that they will change their minds and drop charges throughout the loss, throughout the circumstances. Some may have gathered a Fence. Father, we pray that they would drop all charges in the name of Jesus and change their minds. Now that they will break agreement with any vows or judgments or oaths in their heart, releasing the weight that they, that will keep them from you, that will keep them from relief, that will keep them from peace. From peace. Father, we pray. Mm -hmm. That the hold and the hold of trauma and grief will be weakened now, and that the triggers will be weakened now. We pray now that we that it loses its sting in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Lord, for a way of escape for everyone who has suffered and been um, uh, afflicted by trauma or grief, Father. God, I know that you are a deliverer, and we pray for their deliverance. Mm -hmm of Jesus. Father, that they may receive your peace, your comfort, and your love. We pray, Lord, for resiliency, that grace will abound, Lord, that grace will abound much concerning them. And Lord, we cry out for their healing, that you said that you will acknowledge them that are sick, if they acknowledge that they are sick. Father, we pray now that the circumstances and the situations have affected them so, and we encourage them to cry out to you, that you may come and bring healing in the areas where they need it most. We stand on your word, God, that you are the same God, and that you declare that if your people who are called by your name would humble themselves and pray, Seek your face and turn from their wicked ways that you promised to hear from heaven and forgive our sins and heal our land and restore us. Father, we know that this pandemic hit everyone by surprise, but Father, we just pray now in the name of Jesus that you will restore. We pray now that you will 
restore, that you will cause them to understand, that you will cause them to see things from a different perspective. And even in the midst of their pain, that they will still cry out to you. Father, I just thank you because the challenges that we go through, those are the challenges that produce the character in us. So Father, we thank you right now that you are with us. The earth is yours and everything in it. And the world belongs to you, Father, as well as the people in it. So we lift them up to you. We lift up everyone who has experienced loss. And we thank you that we have safety in you. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We declare that the Lord's grace abounds. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for walking with us every day in everything that we face. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. grace grace is power. Grace Grace gives you the power to rise up. And Mm -hmm. we have Apostle Andrea from Grace is Power Ministries here. Mm Mm-hmm. And I thank you so much for that amazing prayer mm-hmm. to carry us forward. Amen. I mean, we all know sometimes prayer has to carry you forward. It does. It does. We can unlock any lock with prayer. Anything yeah. that is locked up, we may feel that it's holding us or keeping us stuck. Prayer can unlock us. And it's just that posture, having the right posture before the Lord with a pure heart that, you know, I know that you have the answer, but I'm coming just because of who you are. And I know right. that you're able to set me free. And then he'll begin to ex- to reveal who he is to you specifically. Yes, yes mm-hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, um, on top of our personal loss, you know, we've lost so many giants over the past year and a half. I mean, starting off uh, 2020, Mm -hmm. um, I remember Kobe Bryant passing away and that that was a shock. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Even before I have Nipsey Hussle here up on the wall Mm -hmm. before that Nipsey Hussle passing away was a shock wave in our culture. So many shocks in our culture. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, John Lewis. like. I mean, so many, Cicely Tyson. I could go on and on and on and on, but these are giants um, here in the earth and giants in the spirit, right? Right. Um, and you have you have explained this to me in, in a way that I never understood before. Mm-hmm. Um, and and when my grandmother passed away, you know, the Lord spoke to me about carrying forth legacies. Um, And the fact that we were seeing so many giants transition, it was the mark of a new era. Um, And that, um, you know, some of us are chosen to carry on their mantles. Um, So can you just break this down for us? Because this was all new to me. Um, And um, I I want to also share a quick story that led up to this as well. Um, I, I began seeking God about transforming the culture uh, when George Floyd was murdered. Yes. Um, because I I was so disturbed in my spirit. I just I I had to do something. Right. It was like a enough is enough moment. And um, what the Lord showed me, you know, specifically about George Floyd, you know, we honor him today as well. You know, he's he is one of the reasons why we're here as well. Um, But I heard a news story um, that one of his school teachers shared um, that the uh, I think I think he was in second or third grade and the school teacher gave them assignment about who they wanted to be when they grew up. And George Floyd drew out a picture of a Supreme Court judge. Mm-hmm. And what the Holy Spirit revealed to me was the mantle on his life was justice, right? Um, and so if, you know, everyone um, chooses their own path, right? Because we have free will. Um, and so, you know, we don't know if he was destined to be a Supreme Court judge, um, but his life may have t- taken him a different direction. But the mantle on his life was justice. And so justice came one way or another. And we see um, that he was the catalyst um, for justice um, here in the earth. Um, and that's when I started to understand about um the book of destinies over our lives, that every person has a book of destiny over their life. So can you break this down for us to understand? Because it gave me just a greater spiritual awareness 
And it also gave me the strength to carry forth grief in a different way. So instead of expressing it in anger, it pushed me more forward into purpose. Right. Yeah. So I remember the passing of your grandmother and actually seeing that on Instagram and you made Mm -hmm. your post. And I felt when I saw it, I was like, Candace is about to pick up her mantle. And we have to be mindful that, you know, um, we all have been given an assignment in the earth. Right. Mm -hmm. And we are called to fulfill that assignment. But some mantles are greater than others. It is a role. It is a responsibility. And sometimes life happens and we get taken astray or we don't fulfill the assignment. That does not mean that the assignment um, is null and void. It must be completed. So mantles seek succession. Mm Right. And mantles are required required to be fulfilled. Um, So what God was revealing to me is in this hour, he is restoring order. And in order for him to restore order, we have to pick up those mantles and of course, fulfill what we are called to do. Um, When I think about George Floyd, he was called to justice. That could be in the natural or it could be in the spiritual and it will coincide. We don't know, but we do see the marker on his life that even when he passed, that what he was called to do still was brought forth. So can you imagine the magnitude of it? You know, if he would have walked in it and God is, um, you know, mantles aren't needed in heaven. They're needed for the earth, you know? Mm -hmm. So and always ask God, Lord, does this mantle, you know, always ask him for a mantle, but we want to make sure that we're fulfilling what he called us to do first. So we can't be right. moving into asking or looking at great mantles and we haven't accept the call on our life. Mm. You know, when I think about Elisha and Elijah and Elisha in the Old Testament. He cast his mantle on Elisha while Elisha was working in the field. Mm. He was working. And then mm. God said, give him this mantle. Right. So mantles come from God. Mm. They come from God. And these mantles will um, bring the resources that we need to fulfill certain assignments. You know, sometimes we think about family members that rejected the call, rejected the mantle. Right. Mm. Some people complain about the mantle you know, and say, I don't want it. It's too heavy. I don't want to walk it out. But they, the enemy deceives them and to, for them to not see the blessing in the mantle or the change that they can make in the earth. And mm-hmm. God wants to uh, release and restore dynasties. That is the purpose wow. of why your family was created. Why did he put your bloodline in the earth? Right. He wants to restore the purpose of the bloodline. He wants to um, look upon us. And sometimes the purpose of the bloodline was tainted or taken in another direction because of sin or trans, uh, transgression or iniquity. But God wants to be able to look at us and be pleased, give peace upon our life so we can carry out the assignment that he has positioned us to do. Right. Right. Oh, wow. Wow. This is next level understanding. And I I believe that is God's desire right now to increase our understanding. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, You made a good point about, you know, being in divine order. Right. So Mm -hmm. the the divine order is is first knowing your purpose and then accepting your call and assignment. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, And then from there, you begin to and, and just my experience, you begin to, again, gr- um, have greater understanding about what is in your bloodline, right? What, right. what, what was the generational blessing over your bloodline? Because mm-hmm. I feel like, especially in the Black community, we focus a lot on the generational curses, right? Mm-hmm. But there's also generational blessings yes. over your bloodline. Yeah, so yes. we can we can tap into the blessings in, mm-hmm. in our bloodlines. Um and and so when I look at, you know, my grandparents, um, you know, I have one living grandmother. Um, but when I look at my mother's side, my grandparents were entrepreneurs. And when I look at my father's side, uh, they were educators. And mm-hmm. I look at myself and I'm like, I am passionate about entrepreneurship and education. So that makes sense. Right. <laughs> um, so it's just, you know, um, 
this is a time to study your study your um your family your your study your your ancestors what was passed down to you what can you pick up um and then you know god will will bring more revelation from there um and i have something to add this is a perfect opportunity to seek the lord in prayer yeah. This is a great opportunity to come to him and say, Holy Spirit, will you show me what's needed in this era? In this era, yes. yes. In my bloodline, right? Because yes. he never slumbers nor sleeps. So he knows, you know, sometimes when we say, Lord, restore this in my life, restore that, we're, we're able to name something that we know we lost. But what about the right. things we don't know was lost? What about the things wow, that, that we don't even know, right? The blessings that he placed on our bloodline that are in our generations before that they... Mm -hmm. um, couldn't reach that pinnacle, but they begin to pray into someone who could. Then they begin yes. to pour up blessings through prayer in heaven. And then we begin to ask the Lord, show us what that is. And then he can show us what's needed in this era. And he's faithful to do it. He's a God that can supply all our needs. He saves the blessings for us because it's right. his desire to bless us. So I would say use that as an opportunity to partner with Holy Spirit. So then you're not moving in your own understanding but you're following him. And then throughout that process, you're building an intimacy and a relationship with him to be able exactly. to walk the mantle out because a part of the mantle is, and we find it with Jesus Christ, one of the realities of the kingdom is that life springs forth in death. Mm. And Jesus proved that to us when he died on the cross, right? right. We're a product of the seed that he planted when he died. Wow. So part of the mantle is being able to accept the call, right? So yeah. we want to know our purpose. We want to know how we can live our best life. But then God wants us to understand that we must lay our life down. And in the process of laying our life down, we can walk into experiencing the blessings because he promised that to us. But then we can't love the blessings more than we love him. We can't love the blessings more than we love the purpose. Right. So, with the mantle, we understand that the mantle comes with resources, anointing, yes. ability to fulfill assignments. It comes with authority. It even comes with angelic assistance. It comes with God being able to answer your prayers quickly. That's the mantle that he will give you. But then right. I really believe in this season that when we speak about those who suffer through the pandemic, that God is on the side of the afflicted and that yeah. he remembers that everything and every challenge that we experience, it builds character in us and it's designed to cause us to shun evil mm. and establish integrity and establish mm. the fear of God in our life. And then when we establish those things, we can, we can be trusted with the mantle because the mantle carries weight. The mantle is yes. heavy, so you have to be able to sustain it. You know, you have to be right. able to out and that solidifies the foundation that God builds in us and then we can accept these mantles because remember some people didn't fulfill it because the enemy came in and distracted them but then that even gives us an opportunity in this new era to assess how did my grandfather um, not fulfill his destiny how did my grandmother start and stop you know, right. and then we begin to examine the things that attack them, that hindered them. We can study them and partner with God to overthrow it and receive the fullness of the mantle. Wow. Wow. And, you know, that's what gives us the power from the grief. Right. We can transform right. our grief into power um, because, you know, grief, grief can just you know, keep you in such a low place, right? Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it's hard to even process what you're feeling. Right. Um, but I got so much power from seeking God about my grandparents, you know, mm -hmm. and, I, and what we emphasized yesterday is, you know, our generation, we have the privilege to yes. uh, do many things that our parents and grandparents didn't have the capability right. to do you know, because of the state of our society, because, you know, of whatever they faced at the time. Okay. But the fact that we can um, have peace in knowing that, you know, their destinies are, are, are not null and void. They can be passed on, they can be picked up. 
And um, that changed that changed me. It it, it it transformed my grief into power and legacy, like my focus on legacy. And I think that's what we can carry forward. Um, and especially looking at the giants that have passed on, right? Which what, mm -hmm. what, what may apply to you, you know, that, you know, how can they pass the baton on to you, you know? Right. right. It makes me think about too, Elijah, um, his mantle was so heavy and strong that it had to be passed on to more than one person. Wow. Yeah. I, I can see that. The Lord yeah. told him to anoint two kings and also yeah. a prophet. His influence was massive. Right. Yeah. We have to look at it with an open perspective and just the opportunity that God would choose you in this era to do something right. great. In right. Isaiah 61 and 3 is something else I want to point out, too, because when I think about the pandemic, he said he'll give you beauty for ashes. He said he'll give you the oil of joy mm -hmm. for mourning. He said that he'll give you a garment of praise. Sometimes we look at that garment of praise of just putting on praise when we're feeling heavy. But the garment right. of praise is a literal mantle. Yeah. So everything that you have gone through, every challenge, God will cause recognition to come upon your life. God will cause wow. people to admire you. God will cause you to be able to answer questions and help people in their time of need. He'll put respect right. on your life. He'll shift mm. the dynamic for you. So it's a beautiful thing to pick up those destinies, those legacies and those mantles. And I think that's the desire of God, that if you would trust him to do it, and then he will literally blow your mind because we can't conceive what is before us. You know, someone mentioned yeah. yesterday that um, we have to introduce ourselves to ourselves. Um, but I feel as though God has to introduce us to us because yeah. uh, has caused us an individual that God didn't create. And then as we mm -hmm. pass through those challenges, we come into an understanding of who we really are and what we're capable we really of doing. And then we can really pick up that mantle and run with it. Wow, this is so good, Andrea. Wow, yeah. <laughs> this is so deep. Um, so this this is shifting. This is shifting how we're dealing with grief, so that we can um, uh, move into who we really are. You know who we really are, and I love that. This has been so helpful um, for so many. Um, and I think that, um, you know, again, these unprecedented times, you know, what we've heard, you know, so much um, is actually transforming into the most powerful times that we will ever witness. Yes. 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 So thank you so much for sharing today. Um, everyone, take this to heart, you know, talk to God in your in your private time. Um, and and revisit how how you're carrying the weights um, of of grief, and it all has its place. It all has, you know, its purpose um, for you to release that. Um, but think about what are you going to pick up now? You know, what can their lives now deposit into you um, mm -hmm. that God will bring you clarity on? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you so much again for hosting yeah, this sacred right time, um, this beautiful time. And um, I'm so excited for what's to come, Andrea. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Wow. I know that was so impactful for everyone here this morning and this afternoon. Um, we are going to hop right into uh, the Seven Mountains. Um, how many of you all have heard of the Seven Mountains of Influence, first of all? <laughs> because um, actually to explain how I discovered it, um, it was actually through a teaching from my home church, uh, Destiny Metropolitan Worship Church. I have to give a shout out to all the places that have groomed me, uh, my pastors who have groomed me, pa Pastor Brian E. Crute. Um, introduced me to the seven mountains. And this is God's biblical divine design for our, our society. And this is what's currently impacting our culture. And the seven mountains of influence are uh, the arts and entertainment, business, church, education, government, family, and media. And so we're going to talk through 
um, transforming the culture through these seven mountains. And so um, all of our guests today um, have incredible influence um, in each of these seven mountains for us to really gain greater understanding about God's purpose in this new era um, so that we can bring forth his glory um, and his promises.